Welcome to the Dancing Bear Enlightenment Academy Holistic Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Beverly. Today we have a wonderful guest from Sweden, Inanya. Inaya. Inaya, thank you. Sorry about that. Inaya (laughs) Okrut. She is a paradigm shifter, redesigning the logical mind with heart and soul wisdom. She's an author, vocal sound healer channeler combining shamanism and akashic record reading a retreat letter leader and an icf leader coach welcome In- inaya did i say it right this time <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much i love to be here thank you beverly <laughs> glad you're here at last even though it's retrograde <laughs> Yeah, wow. It, <laughs> it's an interesting time. Yes, it is. <laughs> so tell us your transformational story, how you got started on this very interesting path and why you do what you do. Oh, that's a long story, of course, because I'm 62 soon. But uh, well, I uh, when I was five, I already know that I will dedicate my life to be an artist. Mm. And as an artist, it has been, you know, like a transformational journey that always just one one uh, event uh, leads to next one and one job leads to next next level of that one and uh, so it's a natural path from from uh, from start and i uh, i started to be a tennis coach as a 14 year old and uh, so when i i em- entered school I already had my money from tennis and could just spend time to my art and the dedication to that and had uh, lots of exhibitions and I uh, started as had having quite a lot of work as a you know as a designer and um, made clothes artist clothes and uh, made uh, um, illustrations as well but more big ones for uh, shopping windows and like that and then uh, i came to a a time when uh, uh, when a a very good friend uh, of me that i traveled along with uh, and uh, i lived uh, very close with uh, she turned uh, when i was 26 to be depressed and then schizophrenic and and uh, hanged herself Oh. And that put me into a very, very dark side, night of the soul. Mm. And w- within that, I, I was afraid of my own power. And uh, so I met a man that I could never destroy because he was so down under. And I got a daughter with him. And uh, we lived in Argentina. And I was locked in and ter- totally you know yeah really in in a disaster and i came home gave birth to my daughter two years later i was able to escape from him with my daughter but but with hidden address uh, that meant that i couldn't uh, get in touch with any of my old friends leave my name leave all what i had and everything and just go under you know, undercover. And there I I started to be interested in healing, of course. Yeah. So I, I, I got, uh, actually I was healing myself with, uh, with uh, only minerals and sound from planetaries, planetary sounds. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I continue as an artist, but uh, undercover in another name and, and, uh, I turned into uh, coming to a city planning uh, where, as an artist and saw that nobody cared about the city, about the people in the city. They cared, of, of their, uh, they cared about their career and about, you know, their well, uh, different uh, status, what they wanted to, uh, who they wanted to speak to and who were no, uh, le- less value and like that. So I, I felt that this is a space I need to work in. And I, I started to have a lots of 
of you know knowledge from justice and everything through my divorce from my daughter's father it's a it's it's a it's a big story i tried to make it short but yeah. anyway yeah, anyway i was then working as a consultant and uh, I, I it worked very well i worked as a consultant together with being an artist and a tennis coach and later it came more and more work with a uh, very interesting uh, uh, places as a university to to make um, entrepreneurship as a, as a profile for the university and also to develop it into the courses. So uh, all, all of that actually always was like co cooperate between the fields. So now I start to come to divine duality what it is. Uh, it, it's before because we have so many separate uh, silos in our world about uh, separated skills. But what I found out is that when I am dedicated with one subject and another that is very, very different from the other, actually they make a metaphysic knowledge and wisdom between them. And uh, so I always had like two or three works in the same time, and they always made the other more more uh, professional and and more successful. And uh, so I, for me, it's very natural with with coping with duality as something that is very very good to to be in. But I see in the world that it's used to uh, to be opposites that always are fighting with each other, you know, like you can't be an artist and a tennis coach and working in the university because it's taboo in the different status. <laughs> and uh, and uh, then after after also being uh, I, I ran a refugee camp with uh, about 100 people coming and going. Uh, when when we had lots of refugees here in Sweden, and uh, I start to to see lots of patterns about uh, about innovation, entrepreneurship, religion, and everything what's deeper beyond what's really there that makes things develop. Mm -hmm. So it's when true. I yeah, so so when I came uh, came to that, I started to write. My first book took three years to come to level by level down and see that most of things actually just evolve from from our our interest of going into a subject and not something that we search for, but right. it, it evolves in the between different subjects. Mm -hmm. And uh, Later, I came to divine duality, where I can really feel, see how yin yang energy are healing the, 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 the one side and the other are healing each other and mm -hmm. are the field that create reality. And when mm -hmm. we can understand the two opposites as, to, as a cooperating field, we are really both in healing of the duality as we have misused it and also in a creative field where we can use what we have had as as really threshold thresholds to be stepping stones to our next evolution so it's magic yeah. for me yeah. yeah i agree yeah it's very synergistic um and i don't think for people like for you you had different interests i don't think that's an accident no, I think that was part of the divine plan. Take a little of this and a little of this and a little of this and you mix it together and look what you get. You know, it's a whole new recipe. And I think that's what we're all here to do is to find out those little pieces that work for us and put them together for who we are as a unique person. That's really wonderful. So what led you to become a paradigm shifter? Tell us about that. How do you do that? Yeah, uh, I, I've. I, as many feel that this is a really paradigm that that is shifting from 
have had uh, information from outside that we store in our brain and that we come into silos of, of, uh, of what we have uh, as knowledge, but we can't communicate between the silos. And, and it started to be a society now that we need to be, uh, have our knowledge from inward and our wisdom from inside. Right. And uh, so all my books and my retreats and what I'm doing is leading us to, to uh, have the sensories that are so kept down from school and everything to, to make them alive again and to, uh, to, um, to come into the inner knowing and to the connection with the source of everything that is around us that we are, are so disconnected from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the the nature of earth but all all dimensions realities and and how we can create reality from uh, to ourselves i can just say you know i i i lived under a hidden address and i i never felt myself as a victim so uh, i actually just have it as a, as a something that i really value now and I had a, of course, it was hard time, but I'm here now and I have everything I can ever think of. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really no loss of anything. And it, it's not that far ago. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's just a, a perception of life. And when we live in a wonder and see uh, and look for, for, what is alive, really, there are so much metaphysic magic around us that we can create from and create our lives from. And we are not at all trapped in the corporate field of, of uh, the markets, as we well, thought, uh, think we are mostly. You know. So you were yeah. talking about um, duality and the mastery of duality as our next maturity. Talk about that a little. Absolutely, absolutely, and and to develop the skills that we didn't use, like you know, our skills, our sensory system, that we have, we have start, we have stopped to to radiate attraction because we didn't, we we don't use our sensories as as much as as human beings as we are born with, we are born with so much more skills that we have, and we have, have been taught to, to live another kind of world. So life. are you saying trust our intuition and our inner senses and not just our physical senses? Is that what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. And the more we do it, we, we can also see that, I mean, the, the skills of another, I can just tap into the skill of another person and I get a part of it by the frequency of it and it get into the knowledge that I can tap into. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's not like we are silos of knowledge and I know from inside, we are a web of consciousness mm -hmm. that we can connect to. That's true. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Happened. Yeah. People. Nice. So a lot of people today are maybe on the edge of being out of control. So <laughs> talk a little yeah, bit. We are not in control from others, uh, from the old system. We can't be because it's nothing is predicted any longer. Yeah, everything is unstable. So how mm. do we get that instability? Mm. How we? How do we deal with that instability? How do we navigate it? Yeah, I, it's. It's a start as a, in our healing path and uh, to uh, surrender, to get, to uh, surrender to not knowing. Ah. But also going into, uh, start to sense what we took for granted. Mm. The wonder of all existence around us that we took for granted and start to, if we just start to feel the, 
the the magic of a shower taking a shower <laughs> you know the magic of having shoes the magic of of uh, go inside our house and and having a place to live in when we start to be in wonder we start to to see more and feel more and we are we are getting our energy fields start to to be more powerful and within that our inner knowing start to evolve yeah so it's that... it's lot about gratitude and it's lot about wonder um, that uh, that is a easy way to start to surrender because it's not like giving everything away it's more more like giving away what we took for granted Hmm. and helping people so talk about your retreats and how you do the transformation yeah well yeah the retreats are are about divine duality to to learn about the tools of, uh, of divine duality that is first of all it's a vertical breath it's a it's a breath uh, that uh, that includes the body uh, and and anchor it into earth and into the source and make us a conduit and we use uh, divine duality is uh, like the energy of 369 like nikola tesla is teaching as well was teaching and uh, i use uh, also I, I integrate people with a with the knowledge about the different frequencies that surround us and they start to create from their uh, their beingness in a uh, level by level to expand to be able to consciously create their own lives and it's uh yeah it's it's a lot in it so it's it's different different retreats but the divine duality it's a it's a the part that is always there and how to elevate ourselves through our birthrights that we that we already have and of course, they are, we use I use sound because I use undertones and overtones and hang song to to um, also to 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 heal what what needs to be healed. And I also teach how to do it to to the ones on the retreats. And then we go. Forks? How do you do the pardon? sound? How do you do the sound? Is it like tuning forks or music? N no, by by voice. By voice, okay. Yeah, I do it by voice uh, primarily, but I have lots of crystal balls and gong and rams. And when I uh, uh, we we uh, elevate the chakras, it's one of part of it. Uh, I use the instruments that is uh, right for all all levels to really, and and they are moving into the and the painting it and painting also the flower of life the sacred geometry in in uh, in its form and see that we are the flower of life the energy of our chakras is the same as the archangels and 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 the, the sacred geometry yeah so it it's makes us one with the, the cosmic wisdom nice and is, is that how you uh, help people to um, uh, use their heart, uh, brain, body harmony and bring it about? Or is that different? Yeah, directly when we have the vertical breath, we come into it. Because uh, uh, with, with the vertical breath, it's a center is in the heart. We start with the pineal gland and, and travel down to the heart and then with the consciousness and then the vertical line is the breath line and when we expand the heart it start to to uh, evolve to be wider and wider and then it's all our bodies encapsulated in in the, the heart field and then we are heart mind body connected yeah that's our toroidal field cool yeah yeah right so um so how do you use the the sound healing for uh trauma well uh sound healing we use hang song like uh, it's two tunes uh, two uh, notes oh. that are uh, very close to each other and mm -hmm. when i i go through uh, the body and meridians and the organs 
when there are blockages, the sound can't come through and it starts to miss sound. And then we know this is a place to, to focus on and to go into with undertones with, and with overtones and, vo and uh, yeah, with uh, different vocals to come in into it and vowels. So, so do you do it or do you have the, the participant make the sound? Both. Both. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's really awesome. Um, cool. Um, so you have a free gift for our audience, a free discovery session on sound healing, which sounds really interesting. So <laughs> Thank tell you. us about your free gift. Yeah, it's a, when, when I meet uh, the one who wants to come for a free gift, it's, it's meeting and see the, their, their intention. If they, uh, it's very good if they think about it before, what, what, what the intention is with the meeting, what they need help with, or what they want to evolve and what they love, <laughs> you know? And then we go into that space and see what we can do together and what I can maybe uh, give them to come forward in their life. And maybe they want to come further into deepening into divine duality, and maybe it's something else. And the sound healing, I uh, I will, uh, you know, the, check their body. And especially if they uh, say, I have problems with this and this, we go deeper into that as well. Yeah. That's really mm. interesting. So for mm. those of you that are on YouTube, I'll have the link down below. And if you're listening on the podcast, you can get that wonderful free gift at oakrootspiritualacademy.com forward slash gift. That's oakrootspiritualacademy.com forward slash gift. Wonderful gift. Sounds awesome. So do you have any closing word for everybody? Mm, first of all, everyone's voice is a healing voice mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And no voice is a, is a bad voice. voice. We have exactly a copy in our voice as we need for our healing. And... Uh, the second, it would be that when we come further into self-love, everything else evolves. And we come there from wonder and gratitude of what we took for granted. Wonderful yeah. white words. Thank you so much for being our wonderful guest today. And mm, thank, thank all you, of Beverly. you. For you're welcome. And thank all of you for joining us. And be sure to get that awesome gift. So if you would be kind enough to like and subscribe, we would appreciate that. That helps with the algorithms. And we will see you again either Thursday night for the live meditation or next week for our next guest. So remember to be the light you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm.